Applied Imagination is a, uh, a company, a group of creative artists who uh, get together and make fantastic displays around the country. The more proper term for it is a garden railway. That's what we often do. But it's a, uh, it's a collection of elements. We have miniature buildings that we call botanical architecture that our artists build. Uh, we have the trains, the G-scale trains that run through the exhibit and then the landscaping and the plants. But we bring all that together. We do model railroads. And with model railroads, you have to have your buildings. And with the buildings in applied imagination, they're just not ordinary buildings. They're buildings that are made completely of botanical materials. It all starts with that, that initial customer who's just wanting to know what, what we can do with them. It goes to our core design group, uh, which is uh, Cindy, Jason, our father Paul and I. And we, uh, we really start to put pull things into the think tank and work out what we can do. We'll take it to paper on the, dr the drafting table. My cousin Jason uh, is doing that now, working closely with my father. The process begins with pretty much how big a display would they like to have. We try to visit and or get photos and find out what their theme, what their intentions are, what would they like to see. View the area try to feel out what feels good to come back, get together with Brian and Cindy and Paul. Uh, we put together probably the best package that we think the client will, will like. If I get to go ahead, I go ahead, and Paul and I will sit down and lay out some tracks, get some concepts put together, and then we'll start producing it here. I produce all the track, the roadbed, everything that we can physically build here at the shop in Alexandria. We'll use mimosa leaves for shutters, cork bark for roof shingles, little sticks and twigs for window mullions. Bark, tree bark, dead trees, fungus that actually grows on the side of the trees. They're just as cool up close as they are from far away. They're just this little piece of magic that we invent out of all natural materials to make a building that is historically accurate, architecturally correct, you would recognize the building if you saw it, and then up close you'd realize, well, dang, that's an acorn. Each house builder, each person that's worked on the bridge, they'll give you their experiences that, well, I think this one will work better, the birch bark works better here, cork works better here. We all learn from each other. Well, you know, a walk through the woods is not the same thing anymore for those of us who work here. It needs to be a sturdy botanical material. It can't just be a soft green leaf that's gonna rot away. So we need a variety of sticks. Acorn caps, I had no idea how many different oak trees there were and the different shapes and sizes of acorn caps. Some make good planter boxes, some make good um, architectural details along the roof edge. We have a great area that we live in here in the northern Kentucky area that we're blessed to have ditch willow. A lot of the bridges that are produced for our displays would consist of that. They're structurally sound. I remember the, the first time that I went out with Bod, I couldn't believe it. I'm, we're going out in the woods and we're collecting this stuff. It's, this is awesome. This is great. I don't have to sit behind a desk. There's certainly a lot of time, a lot of time up front with design. That's probably where we have uh, probably the most most time invested, just figuring out what and how and this and that. Uh, as it as it narrows down, um, as we start to build the architecture, uh, the buildings themselves that the artists are making can they often range anywhere from 40 hours, and can go as high as 300 hours for a large piece. When we get out to working on the train track and the roadbed and the bridges, uh, we can easily easily absorb uh, one to three weeks in the, the construction of the core materials, the exhibit. Nowadays, it's often within the time frame of a week on site to actually set things up. Uh, however, it can, can stretch out to a week and a half or two weeks if it's a very intricate display. Setting up these displays, it really does look like organized chaos. I'm fortunate enough that I've watched my Uncle Paul do these enough times. I kind of, some people say that I share his brain. I have things that I need people to do. We'll get there, we'll initially start setting up track and the people that we are lucky to have around us all know their place as far as 
what needs to happen, what is the next step, and if anyone doesn't know, the person next to them certainly gives them a hand. A fast play of what we do, if you were to watch a speed setup of it, uh, it's people everywhere. There's not, there's, there's not somebody with idle hands. The good part about that is I try to find people's strengths and use that to the best of their ability to create what we do. Back in 1982, I think we did our first uh, garden railway uh, for the Ameriflora exhibit. And shortly after that, that we got into the botanical realm, we started exploring that with the Kern Conservatory, which is uh, local here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, we, did, we did our first miniature botanical buildings made out of sticks and leaves and acorns. And I think it was, a, uh, it was a holiday theme. The Applied Imagination team are actually, they're magicians and totally creative. There, there are so many definers that I could say about how they create what they create because it, it's so amazing. It just truly is a, a creative process for them. The Crown Conservatory is one of, one of our best highlights here. Uh, we have a fantastic relationship with them. It has been going uh, on since 86. So when we started working with them, it was mainly about the trains. And then they started adding in this additional feature of constructing these little buildings that bring the whole scene to life. When we have people come visit our displays, it's, it's, it's really nice to share the magic with them that we, we work so hard to create. The people that see these displays, I would hope they would get absolute enjoyment. Take a 99-year-old, take him back to eight years old when he played with trains. Take an eight-year-old and have him appreciate the same that his grandfather saw steam engines riding down the road. It's a warm feeling inside. I want the, the people, the, the families, the kids, even the kids at heart, to come and, and really immerse themselves in the joy of the exhibit, just to be there and uh, just take in all the details. Uh, it is mesmerizing and it does pull you in. My father calls it the art of happiness, so it's, it's sure nice to share happiness with people.